Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today we're gonna to be answering one of your questions that you sent me. Now I know a lot of people have been sending me questions through YouTube, through my email. I'm gonna try and get to them, but there is a lot coming in. Today I just wanted to say a couple things. I was on Power Apps Tutorial with Darren Neese, and that should be in the description below. So if you wanna watch the live broadcast of us just kind of talking Power Apps and beyond and went into SQL, then you can watch that video. It will be in the description below. Also, in the coming month, April, at the end of April, I will be going to the Microsoft 365 conference, the community conference. If you want to say hello, I will be there. So someone sent me a question right here. So we, let's see, we can see it right there. So they sent me a question and pretty much it's like a repeating combo box or and there's a delete button and an add another. So every time you create one, you create a new combo box all the way down. So I thought this was a good idea. I thought this, this could be reused. So let's go ahead and create this in Power Apps. All right, we're in Power Apps. This is where I like to be on a canvas blank sheet. This is our painting, brand new painting. As Plato would say, he would say, the beginning is the most important work. So this is the most important work. We're gonna set up our UI UX. We're not gonna focus on a data source yet. Data source does not matter right now. Data source is something we can figure out later. Let's get what it kind of will look like. This is like the wireframe of our app. This is where we're gonna set what things could look like. So if I want something to repeat over and over and over, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna create a gallery. I'm gonna insert a gallery and a vertical gallery. That's what I want is a vertical gallery, right? Because I want it to repeat all the way down. Now I'm gonna get rid of all of this and the layout is just going to be blank, right? So we have a blank layout. There's no data source connected to it. In this top part, I'm gonna put a combo box. Now we could do regular or we could do modern. My preference right now is I actually like the modern combo box better. So I'm gonna do the modern combo box here. This is just preference. You need to decide what you wanna do. If you wanna go modern or if you wanna do classic. I can't make the decision for you. I can give you advice, but sometimes it, there's reasons to do both. All right, so now we have a combo box that's repeating four times right now out of the box. You know, if we wanted it to repeat one time, we could write in one here. And it's literally going to repeat one time. If we wanted it to repeat four times, it's not, we're not gonna write the number four. That's not gonna work. We're gonna need to write the number one four times, five times, six times, seven times. So it's based on the array of data there that's how many times that it's going to repeat itself. So, and it doesn't have to be the number one. It can literally be the letter A. The letter A repeating itself is still going to repeat our combo box. It has nothing to do with the numbers. It has to do with the amount in the array. And this is important because I'm gonna use this later on. All right, so now I have done this before where you have the button on the inside of the gallery, but I've also had the button on the outside. Let's keep it simple today. And let's just do a button on the outside. All right, so the button is add line. So the button's gonna add a new line. Right now it does nothing. So on our button, we're gonna go to the on select. So when we click on it, on the button here, we're going to collect. We're gonna create a collection that creates an array for us. So we're gonna collect and we'll give our collection a name. How about collect num of combo box? Number of combo boxes and we'll just say this is combo box name. And we'll just give it the name of X. All right, so we have a very simple, simple collection. And I am going to replace my items property in my gallery as my collection name. So collection, com number of combo boxes. Now when we click on it, it adds lines. 
and we want to make sure that we have enough space for all of our drop downs or combo boxes actually and we can see that now we have our combo box and it's repeating itself now the data that we want in the combo box let's say I don't know we'll do something simple dog cat horse I just thought of a few things so now the combo boxes all of the combo boxes are the same now we can have other data in here also if we wanted to have other data if we wanted to collect I don't know a text input we could also have that in here we could also have a text input and that would allow us to write in here also if we wanted to write more we could then write even more for each of the lines now if you want these to be split up in any way you can always come in here and insert a rectangle now a rectangle is actually classic you can insert a rectangle, drop it down to, z to zero width. Just drop it down all the way. Let's see if we can do that. The rectangle, the, the height, I mean, the height, drop it down to zero, right? It's blank now. Let's move it all the way to the bottom. Now just give it a height of one. And the height goes all the way over. We may have to reselect the height once we do the width. But now we got a line there. So it's just a very simple concept. Some people like to do that. Some people don't. So the picture gives an X, an X value. This is going to be more difficult, I think, because we gave the collections all the same name. So let's put an X here, and this is going to be our delete button. Uh, delete. Let's see if we have an icon that's an X. But this gets into another tip. tip. Let's say you can't figure out which icon it is. So just add an icon here, add an icon, and then on the right side, you can actually click here, and there we go. It's called cancel. So actually, if you add an icon and then you change it on the right side, it's actually easier for me to find what I'm looking for. So now we have our X button. Now what this is going to do is it's going to remove the row. So let's try this out. Let's see if this works like I expected to. So remove from collection num box this item all right so we're going to remove this item now if you notice that that didn't work correctly right here if i remove down here it's actually removing that top row because it's the same name so let's try something out here so on our collect so it's set up as a text value right now I want it to be a number value. I want to increment like in code. So I'm going to say set. Let's make a variable. Set combo box num to one. Let's say it's equal to one. We need a comma actually here. Now after that, we're going to collect or actually let's increment. Combo box one is actually equal to combo box num plus one so set it to plus one so whatever combo box is add another now let's collect our collection combo box I can't remember if I named it none but we're gonna create a new collection and it is going to be the ID so this time it's an ID and we need our squiggly ID is equal to combo box num All right, so now let's try it out. Uh, it looks like I renamed my combo box, so let's call this the same collection combo box. So now let's press play. You can see it, it is working. I did get a error here. What is the error? Oh, it's the name of the collection, so it's actually collection combo box. So now let's take a look at this ID. So we have a text field here. Now insert text label and that's our ID. So you can see that it is incrementing. 
So it is incrementing all the way down. Now, the way we're doing this is just to add items. We're not gonna use this for editing. This is for adding items. If we try and edit items, it's gonna add some super complexity. So we're just gonna add items right now and maybe editing items can come later. Now we can check out our X button. So if we click X here, it removes the three. So now if I write here and I delete number six, it does not delete number one. I delete number eight, it deletes number eight. That's huge. So now we're using that ID. So I think now we just need a way to clear the collection. So I'm just gonna copy here. I'm gonna say clear. And the clear button is going to just reset the entire collection. And that is, I believe, clear the collection. So now when we hit the clear button, it clears it. We don't start off with a new line and also our ID does not reset. We could reset our ID. That's an idea. Um, I don't know if it's necessary. That depends on your requirements if you want to reset the ID. So you could reset the ID right here on the clear button back to zero or one if you wanted to. So we have our drop down repeating of our items. Now the next question is, we need to write this to a data source. Now for me, I'm just gonna go straight to SharePoint because that's easy for me to do. I am going to write this to SharePoint. So we need a column here. This will be title and this will be maybe description. So we'll have a very share, uh, simple SharePoint list very simple SharePoint list. I have title and description. Now, if you wanted to write ID, it's, it's possible. There, there could be reasons to write the Power Apps ID. Although collections, so you got to think about this, collections are stored in the memory of the app. They're always going to reset to zero. So if I were to restart this app, the ID is going to start off at one because we did whatever uh, the zero plus one. So it's not gonna start, if I restarted the app, it's not gonna start at 40. All right, so now I wanna write this to my SharePoint list. Now you can do whatever data source you want, but I'm gonna go to add data, SharePoint, and I have a new SharePoint site. Let's see if it shows up. It's called Simple Site. Gonna to connect to it and these are my animals. We need to make this simple for us. We also want to collect, now there, there's, there's more than one way to write this. We could easily write this as HTML in one multi-line text column. So maybe we'll do both ways. I'm trying to figure out which one we wanna do first. Let's do just writing the collection first and then next we'll do the HTML in a multi-line text box. So, you know, both ways are options. Let's give you options. Maybe there's reasons to do either one. So let's create a, another button. So we have our add line clear, and this button is going to save. And on the save button, we're not gonna do this. We're going to collect the gallery. So I'm going to collect um, collection save data and what am I going to collect uh, let me get my everything right I'm going to collect title and the title is going to be I believe it's combo box let's see combo box canvas one combo box canvas one dot selected dot value now this is not actually going to work this is just the way that I like to do it to me it makes the most sense there's other ways to do this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do for all, for all what? The gallery one, dot all items. For all, the gallery one, all items, I'm gonna collect the title and the description. And let's see if I named that the same in Power Apps, I did description. 
description. And that is text input canvas one dot value. And then we need two ending parentheses. So now this collection is collecting what's in the gallery. The first collection is adding rows to the gallery. All right, so before this for all, I wanna make sure I clear the collection. So clear collection save data. See if I named that correctly, and I did. So now I'm gonna clear it. So if I had something in there, I'm gonna clear it. Then I'm gonna collect everything that's in the gallery. And then I'm going to patch my SharePoint. So let's see if we added the data source, animal with collection, oh, and I'm forgetting my semicolon, with collection save data. Now, let's just test this out. I don't think it'll work right away, but maybe it will. One, two, hi, my name is Andrew. Let's hit the save button. Hit the save button. It didn't seem to do anything. Let's check out SharePoint. Let's hit refresh. It wrote. So each of those lines wrote not in this specific order, not in the same order that we put it in. And, and does that matter? That's a question for you. Does the order matter? Maybe the order matters. Maybe the order does not matter. So now we can clear, we can add lines, horse, dog, um, Greg, Philip, save, back to SharePoint, it writes Greg and Philip. This time it was in the correct order, right? This time it was. We can then delete a line and write Greg again. Refresh, one line, we write Greg. So that's one way to do it. Now you can figure out the other things. Maybe you wanted it to start with one line. Maybe you wanted your collection to start with one line. Uh, that was part of the requirements, that it defaulted to one line. So part of the requirements from the screenshot is that it defaults to one line, right? So right now, even though you see it when I'm not in play, this, act this that line does not actually exist. So on the app, we can do an on start. Now you could do this on the on visible of a screen, but I'm just going to do this on the on start to show. On the add line, I'm just going to take this code and I'm going to put it on my app on start. So now when we press play, it's blank. But if I click on the three lines here, or three dots, and click the run on start, you're actually gonna see that I actually have one line item in here. And on the on start, it's actually gonna start at a one. But we're starting at 42, so we can try that out. All right, and then we can just go on through and then add our lines. So we can just do three dogs. Now, we have to be careful about the blanks. Maybe you need to write an if statement. If it's blank, don't write. But we can get rid of our blanks. Hit save. Maybe you want some kind of pop-up screen that says, are you sure you want to submit this? These are all items. But now we have three extra lines of dog written. I wanted to show you another way. Let's say you wanted this to be in a multi-line text field. This is just another idea. Multi-line text field. And I want to make sure that it, we use rich text. Yes, we want rich text, we want pictures, we want tables, we want hyperlinks. Um, we'll call this our multi-line. So this is our multi-line text field. Now you can write this however you want. So this is one save button. We'll call this save, let's see the title, text is save idea one. Now let's do save idea two. And this depends on how you want your data to exist and how you need it to exist. Save idea two. Maybe an HTML table will work for you. I want to convert this gallery into HTML table. And I've done this before. So we're gonna insert a HTML text. HTML text here. I want to create a table in HTML. I'm gonna create a table and it'll have a border of one 
and a width equals 100%. All right, so we're creating a table. And then we're going to create our header rows. So our header rows will be TH, and this will be title, TH. And actually, we want um, another TH, and this will be description. All right, so you can see we have that there. Now we want to do our TRTD. So this is HTML that you have to think about. All right, so we're going to do and concat. What do we want to concat? We want to concat. We could do this table, um, our collection save data with TR, TD, and then we're going to do and the title and slash TD with another TD and then we want description and then at the end of description we need to close out our TD so it looks like we have it's sort of working right what are we missing Looks like I'm missing <clears throat> just a simple bracket. There we go. So now we've created a table. We have our table. It's not showing border, so we forgot an equal sign. There we go, so now we have our border. We have our information. So now let's change this up. Now it's not gonna change right away, right? It's only changing when we hit the save button right now. Now the save button is not patching. So when I hit the save button, it will then update our description. It will update. So now it updates our HTML table. So now we want to patch our animals. And this new line item is going to be on title it will or on title it will be test and then our multi-line text field which we need to update our SharePoint list we got to refresh so I'm refreshing SharePoint this will be multi-line is our table so this is going to be our HTML text one dot HTML text. So now let's try save idea number two. So when I click save here, I go to SharePoint. We can see now at the very bottom, if you see that, let me, let me do it a couple of times just so we can see. We refresh we can see these line items are now being created with the full table in a column. Now, will that work for you? I, I, I don't know, maybe that would work for you, but those are two different ideas. So we have save idea number one, where it will write each line separately, but also save idea number two, where we put a table in SharePoint. That could be all you need. Maybe you just want that table in your SharePoint list or in some other fashion that you wanna use it. Let's say, you have a form and there's many different many different fields that you could fill out let me just add this in here and you want it to repeat but also change the space let me let me show the explanation here so we're going to do a container and we want a vertical container and in this vertical container we're going to put our gallery in there our gallery is in there, but also in the vertical container, we have other text inputs. And I'll just do these large ones for now. We have other text inputs that are also in here. 
And maybe we'll move this one to the middle, move down one. So this one's in the middle. We'll give the container some padding. Um, let's see, 10 here, 10 on the bottom. Um, and also we need to increase the gap. So maybe the gap is 25. So now there's a gap between them. So now watch what happens when we remove rows and we add rows. So I have my ID here. Let's move our X over. So now let's add lines. You see, we still kind of get that space in there. And I think that could be very helpful. Now there's other ways to make this even better. So don't forget about containers when we start doing galleries that grow or when things grow and change sizes. I just wanna say thank you for your questions. I know I'm getting lots of emails. I'm gonna try and get to them, but this was a really neat concept. I loved the drawing. I love that you gave me a wireframe of what you're looking for, and we were able to create that. So thank you all. My name is Andrew Hess. If you want to like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. Check out Darren Neese's Power Apps tutorials. I was on there live, and I'll see you next week.